Hello and welcome back to Crash Bandicoot 4, brought to you by Rocky Rabbit Commentaries. We are at the tail end of the Oriental-themed island. Tranquility Falls. Tr sorry. Tranquility Falls, thank you. Yes, yes, because they all have names. Versus Island 1, Island 2, and Island 3. We are going to the boss of Tranquility Falls, 1402. In the year 1402, not much is known, especially Embryo's age, which is... Well, probably tampered with by chemical manufacturing and also his just extreme hideousness, scaring away any biographer who would keep track of his birthday. Uh, and so now in this part, he's mixing his favorite two potions, purple and green. A boss fight. Wah. The reward was a boss fight. Like, no kidding. If you were disappointed, well, maybe you just Ooh, haven't been playing enough works. Crash Bandicoot. Science. See, it really makes me wonder why they put little circles around where it's going to land. No, you probably should not be standing where he's throwing the potion. Crash Bandicoot 1 didn't give you the safety buffer. Crash Bandicoot 1, oh, if he hit you with the potion, they're not going to tell you where it's going to land. You're just dead. Although you're some Cloud, come on. What? It's a boss fight. You don't you don't do it on your very first try. But this isn't even the difficult part of this boss fight. You're right. It's not the most it's not the difficult part of the boss fight. Actually, the most difficult part of the boss fight is right before the checkpoint. Because after the checkpoint, then you're going to get so used to so quickly the nuances of the post checkpoint action that you're going to have no problem finishing it. <laughs> Botulinum toxin. It's referring to Botox. Your way to no. And there. No! Uh, you know what happens when Embryo's on his last health? Uh, dude, you throw purple and green potions. That's effectively all you do. He turns into a series of question marks. Mm. Alright, so this is actually a significant Cloud, I did not know that, that, that there was not an invisible wall there. I am sorry. Well, now you know. There's not an invisible wall there, either. We're learning. Now, three deaths so far, and two of them were of my own doing. Uh, let's try bonking him. No, you gotta okay, wait until he's did... done with his attack pattern before you can successfully bonk him. He broke my spine? Slam, 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 slam. Now, you actually have a, you have a lot more room than it looks like you do. So that was the first lesson, is don't try attacking him, because you're supposed to wait for uh, Akano, Akano to show up. And give you the to show up. Okay, you took out one of his health bars, and then every Crash Bandicoot boss encounter that we've had since the very beginning is that you usually take ticks, tick marks off of the boss's health meter in a similar fashion. So let's do it again. Wait for him to get dizzy. And then thwap. And, and then thwap. Oh, come on. How did that? How did the second one not push him off? Well, because the longer you wait, the more he, the more his character model starts ticking back onto the platform. Now we're going into super psychedelic mode. Which is different than botulism toxin, because botulism toxin does not cause any distortions in perception. Eh? Okay, so Arc Arcano's ability to re uh, to repulse the uh, uh, the green match uh, the the green uh, toxin is very important for this fight. Although although it looks like it can screw you up if you're if you're not ready for it. And that's and that finally is the point of there being no invisible walls, as he's trying to knock you off the platform. Mm -hmm. Good job, Crash. And now, for my final test, taste my reptilian wrath. Uh, Michael, wake up. Oh, my bursitis. <laughs> huh, looks like Embryo just laid an egg. Yes. Let's get out of here. Both figuratively and literally. Crash, you should not, ki you should not take that with you. Come on. Bye, I love how Vulture. animated these world maps are. And now that Embryo has inverted his DNA... 
button, we have unlocked the inverted mode. This allows you to replay uh, uh, previous levels in order to get additional gems and experience new in individual level gimmicks. Some of these gimmicks are really cool. Most of them are not. We have effectively doubled the number of gems you have to get in the whole game in one fell swoop. Yep. Now we have unlocked Louisiana. So are we actually going to go over it? Oh, Classic Crash Kid has been unlocked. Yay, we can play as Classic Crash. I love how blocky and stupid he looks. I don't know, man. This particular uh, Classic Crash model is, uh, is not all that endearing because the head is uh, a bit too spiky. I tell you what, playing as Classic Crash in the flashback tapes, which we will be doing, um, is pretty fitting. Mm. You gotta be in inverted embryo. Come on, put on the put on the crash can. I know all these selections look cool, but we're really here just for the classic crash can. Mm. Yeah. You see, this actually looks fine, but the but the promo splash uh, looked very very bad. Yeah, I mean that that the promo splash really exaggerated like how classic he is. He's not, I mean, he could be more classic. We're not gonna go that classic, though. Whoosh! Because then he just looks like All right, so like is this the actual Mardi bad. Gras level? This is the Mardi Gras level, Yay. yeah. Yay! Oh, the city is alive in New Orleans tonight. Just a couple days ago. No, there were time. gators in Louisiana. Mwah! <laughs> Yeah, to think I was just talking about Bourbon Street in, in New Orleans, where, uh, I, gu I guess what they do in New Orleans is they wash the streets every single night, and they also all have their windows open during the warm season, which is basically warm for most of the year, so the scent of both, uh, mixture of debris, if you will, and also more specifically like bourbon seasoning, hence it's called Bourbon Street from all the restaurants around and all the open windows, really puts you in an atmosphere of what Mardi Gras in New, or in New Orleans is all about. Clive, you could have waited. Get those boxes. It's a spiral float! Oh, you're right. It, it is a spiral float. I don't even know if I registered that going through this. Yay! Slide. Oh, you're supposed to slide through the crates that are that low on the ground. You know, increase your momentum and such. And this is the first time that a Crash Bandicoot canon game actually paid homage to other PS1 titles. I don't think so, actually. Um, especially if you if you want to count the easy-to-access demos. Oh, funny. I never played the easy-to-access demos. Uh, well, uh, Crash, I believe it's Crash 2 has got the demo for Ripto's Rage in it. And if it's not the demo for oh, yeah. Ripto's Rage, then it's the demo for Year of the Dragon. Nice. Oh, get the flashback tape. Yay! We actually got a flashback tape on our very first try. It feels so good. Alright, so just walk through the dudes. Yep, it's not that complicated. I know, they're big and distracting with the juggling act and not having a head, but let's not lose our heads just because they had long since lost theirs. Yeah. You might actually be able to slide them, but, you know, it's it's not really worth the risk. That, I mean, just just like with pretty much every enemy in Crash Bandicoot, there are, two, there are two ways through it. Acknowledging, first and foremost, that's an obstacle. You can either kill the enemy by spinning or sliding into it or jumping on it or just get around it. It is not a requirement to take out enemies. As a matter of fact, the only enemies you're required to take out in Crash Bandicoot games, with a few exceptions, are bosses. And up, and yay! Step right up. I'm your guy. I'm gonna make you fly in one, two, that three. That is fake crash, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's oh, fake yeah. crash. Oh, we, we have not yet seen the last of fake Crash Bandicoot. Brash Kandaku, if you will. I will not. Damn it. There. Watch out for the trumpet ghosts. Oh, when the saints. Oh, when the saints. Oh, when the saints come belly flapping in. They want to have jack o' lanterns, except it's not Halloween anymore. 
Oh, it is uh, definitely not safe to be on those jack-in-the-boxes when they spring, because they don't cause you to jump. They cause you to fly off of the map to your death. Ah, okay. <laughs> Aku Aku is not going to save you from those guys. Nice. Oh, my really? God. Just... You, you didn't feel confident enough to just go? Well, no, because... Well, probably because that was, like, my like fifth attempt at going through this part come to realize that yeah don't stand on the jack-in-the-box when it springs up i do wish that we had an actual answer for the trumpet ghosts because right here it looks like you should be either to spin or jump them you can't kill what is already dead mm. i mean uh, in in a more realistic platformer sure but we are a cartoon platformer yeah Speaking of cartoon platforming, what a colorful and albeit oh, yeah. distracting array of environment pieces, which is welcome, certainly. This is Crash 4. This is the most advanced looking Crash Bandicoot game yet. It should be vibrant. It should be full of life. This will drive you to your death many times because then you're just losing track of where you're supposed to be at any given moment. Although that probably costs you one of the Wumpa Gems. Alright, and here is where difficulty need not apply. It's Pura! Look at the Pura float. I love this stuff. Yeah, it is definitely a Pura float. Woot. And he's even... He's riding a CTR go-kart. Oh, how adorable. Now, is that a nitro-fueled uh, CTR go-kart go or is it a classic one? Um, looks pretty classic to me. Me too. I mean, given that CT CTR PS1 did come out a long time before Nitro Kart Racing, I would think that more people had played CTR than Nitro Kart. Now, you'd be surprised, actually, because Nitro Fuel uh, actually did really well. It did it did well enough for them uh, for uh, e uh, for uh, I believe yeah uh, for Activision rather uh, to go back on their pro uh, go back on their promise of. Uh, of uh, microtransactions. No. Okay, and I think it, it glitch. It causes the box to glitch out. No, it did not. No, it held onto its wumpa fruit. It is kind of weird uh, that it did though, because uh, classically, what would happen if you uh, skipped o uh, if you hit it and skipped over it, it would you know actually uh, deplete the other uh, the other bounces on it. Uh, if we tell the young people of the day this stuff, Mister Gerdat, and they don't believe us. Which is sad, because it's actually very easy to prove. Huh, for some reason I left alone that exclamation and point box. And that was the nitro- yeah, that was the nitro trigger, wasn't it? Maybe. Right, because then we come back from the bonus room and say, Huh, the nitro box is- whoops. Pass, Cloud, come on. It is- it is just a hallway. <sighs> Tourist. I, I do kind of like these uh, Rayman-like looking boxy box platforms with the faces. They're very, very silly, very goofy. They are silly. But they are supposed to be silly. They're kind of standing on me. I'm, I, ain't no, I ain't no buddy's elevator. <laughs> well, you're our elevator today, so there. Oh, there's a hidden gem over there. Yes. But do I miss it? I actually missed the hidden gem. That's funny. Well, it was. Uh, it is supposed to be hidden, Mr. Cloud, and you know it's uh, on the enemy path. It's on the enemy path, and we don't. We don't know if we have the ability to deal with those cyclists yet. So. Well, I mean, that's the thing about gems, though, as we should know, because we picked up a couple hidden gems in the game already. Once you get the gem, it's yours. You can't lose it, and all you have to do that is, of course, unless you back out of the level before finishing it. That's the only way you can lose a gem. Uh, well, you see, uh, that, uh, our job as commentators gives us two opportunities to get a commentary done right. One is exposing the game in the video, and the second is pointing out the flaws of the video maker. <laughs> mm -mm. All right, then. So. <clears throat> yeah, and then we want to skip, uh, skip over the dude. We don't need to switch yet. Now we should switch. I gotta say, on the subject of... Um, aesthetics for the game, visual appealing. Um, this is the most the, the for for number of faces that you could see in a Crash Bandicoot game. This game definitely takes the cake for most faces. Most certainly, which is usually a good thing. Yeah, because 
because uh, they understand that their most likely players are Switch people, and... and people love looking at faces. <laughs> Look out! Yeah, well, I'm not really sure what uh, Constipated Face Man is doing down there, except to give us something to look at on retries. This, uh, these tra these checkpoints are getting pretty treacherous. There's long spaces in between checkpoints, which means that, uh, it's nice to have something to look at while we're going through the same environment over and over again and learning how to overcome so our mistakes. So many fireworks. Oh, they're alternating the ghosts. Watch out, and don't get crushed. One's got a trumpet and the other's got a tuba. Now, are the two shots actually bigger? No, they just go in a different direction. Well, yeah, they go up instead of down. Right, because when you're playing a tuba, the bell is pointed upwards. Mm -hmm. Clever game. Very clever. See, I'm a former brass player. I should know these things. I am not a former bat brass player, but the down? No! We missed it. All right, down? let's see. There you go. You can, you can spin those guys away. Uh... Damn it. Hey, there's Ripper Roo. Hey, Ripper. You missed well, the life all of, our, all of our favorite characters all are showing up for party time. All right, all we right. got the Wampa Gem. All three Wampa Gems, in fact. Sweet. We're definitely not going to get the goddamn die within three lives, Gem. True. Oh, boy. This is getting some freaking Donkey Kong Country on us now. Hey, I like Donkey Kong Country. I'm glad you do. I do, too. <laughs> Thankfully, it only took us two tries in order to overcome this particular checkpoint. This this is the, this is the home stretch. Alright, so stay on. Down. Up. Up. Down, down, <laughs> past cloud. If we stay down for too long, we were gonna get hit by nitro. Yeah, now you're just missing a, a third, a third of the crates at the end of the level because you just didn't go we, for them. We already missed most of the crates. Boom. Not most. So of them. you're right. The nitro, the nitro detonator was hidden in the bonus level. Damn it. <clears throat> well, uh, in the next part, we are going to uh, be exploring even more alternate pathways and game styles. Be safe, everybody.